we Irish, we love our dark, full-bodied red wines. And I think it's because of that Spanish background in us. A lot of us has a ge have a genetic predisposition to liking that sort of Spanish wine. We love going to Spain on holidays and Portugal, whatever. Why wouldn't we? Half of us are half Spanish. If you do a DNA test, you end up looking and finding out that we're ancestors have come from way down there in Spain but a lot of them came here particularly uh, in the 16th century. 16th century was a very troubled time here in Ireland and in 1588 the English were in control of course they'd had many battles we had just gotten Queen Elizabeth in uh, ahead of uh, her father Henry VIII two nasty people and they were colonizing Ireland they were at war with the O'Neills and the O'Donnells and then suddenly out of the blue the King Philip of Spain decided to invade England with the Grand Armada. He sent up nearly 200 ships to invade England and they sailed up to Holland and then around the top of Ireland doing a feint to come in around Southampton, surprise the English, except the surprise they got was a hurricane of two centuries strength that sank 48 ships of the Spanish Armada along the coast of Ireland from Armagh all the way down to, to Kerry and particularly Mayo and Galway, where many of the ships sank. And eventually, of course, some survivors, you know, these ships were running aground, they were being attacked by the English. They captured uh, nearly 200 Spanish sailors and soldiers, brought them to Galway under kind of open house arrest because we were trading with Spain. We knew who their parents were. We knew their towns. And we figured when Queen Elizabeth calmed down that maybe, you know, we could ransom them back to their hometowns and get some money for them. Queen Elizabeth got wind of our treachery in January of 1589 and by June of 1589 she sent her viceroy, a guy called William Fitzwilliam, imagine being called Bill MacBill. He arrived to Galway on a June afternoon, around this time of the year, and on one afternoon he tortured the Spanish sailors looking for the gold and silver that he thought they had, because don't forget he was the boss and spoils of war, he was going to get wealthy from these they had nothing, they had lost everything when their ships were wrecked, or they had given it away to the Irish, or it was taken by the Irish. Anyway, in a fit of anger, on one afternoon on the streets of Galway, William Fitzwilliam had his troop behead 200 Spanish sailors on the streets of Galway. On Abbeygate Street, just in front of the big gate that led out to Fort Hill, to that cemetery that we were just in. That cemetery is certainly over... 500 years old, there was a monastery there uh, which the, the monks, the Augustinian monks had built uh, back in 1500. But by 1588, uh, it became a scene of tragedy and terror as those young men were tied hand and foot and were laid down on the street and their heads were hacked off with very blunt swords with wicked ferocity in the hope that they would give up the gold and silver that they no longer had. It was a tragedy for Galway, it was a tragedy for Ireland, it was certainly a tragedy for the Spanish sailors, but their blood ran freely down the streets of Galway, turning the streets red. The women of Galway, weeping and crying, particularly the women of the Clada, they made winding sheets for those young men and buried their bodies in the cemetery at Fort Hill. Not their heads, their heads were sent by horseback to all the outlying towns and villages around Mayo and Galway and Clare, to be put on spikes outside the gates of those towns as a warning to the locals not to aid the Spanish and of course as a warning to the town of Galway that they were no longer uh, a Spanish city trading with Spain but they were part of Queen Elizabeth's wicked British Empire. Some nights I passed down with a walking tour down Abbey Gate Street and I walked past the Pro Cathedral heading to the back of the shopping centre that narrow canyon of that street that's over 600 years old. And if you stop and you imagine, you can hear the screams of terror, the moans of the dying and the soon to be dead and beheaded. You can hear the excitement in the soldiers' voices as they get about their awful butchery work. You can hear the women crying. That street is the most haunted street in Goway, without a doubt. I feel a chill every time I walk past on the hottest summer day, on the coldest winter afternoon. I get a chill because I know I'm walking over the slippery blood of the Spanish soldiers.